Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, today in the arena. We're going to try to have some fun with the Kamigawa cards. There's a number of cycles in Kamigawa, and these are rare cards that aren't seeing a ton of play at the highest competitive levels, but maybe people haven't actually played with them much yet. And uh, one of the cycles that's really cool is Invoke. So we already did a few of the Invoke cards. We did the Red Invoke with a Burn deck. What was the other one that we did? The Black Invoke, of course. Invoke Despair, Mono Black Control. Those two I thought were pretty straightforward and both decks were very successful. So now the next challenge is to build successful Invoke decks uh, across the other Invokes. Now, there is a version of Invoke Justice, probably the best combo like related way to play Invoke Justice is with Velimachus Lorehold. And I've been working on a deck like that, but I've come up a bit short. Sonio put out a video recently that had a pretty good version of invoking Velimachus Lorehold. I suggest you check it out. It gave me a few things for my deck that made it better, but I'm still not happy with where it is. But the thing is, I don't think we need to do a reanimation combo with Invoke Justice to make it good. Let's read the card. One and a white, 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 sorcery rare. Return target permanent card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Then distribute four plus one plus one counters from among any number of creatures and or vehicles target player controls. So... What we want to do there is get back a sweet permanent from the graveyard and then give plus four plus four permanently to our board. For five mana, that is already a really good deal. It reminds me of a green card, Verderous Gear Hulk, which was a four four trample that when it entered the battlefield and cost five mana. It would put four plus one plus one counters. It's legal and historic, I believe, right now. But uh, yeah, Verderous Gear Hulk and Invoke Justice have a lot in common in that it can create a very powerful battlefield presence. All we need is some kind of cool permanent in the graveyard to get back and some creatures on the battlefield to get counters and this card is very good so we could play this in a traditional white aggro shell with all the white aggressive cards that we normally play but that's lame i draw a line in the sand i don't i don't want to spend too many videos playing the same white cards over and over again there are white cards i don't have a problem with i don't know why everybody thinks i hate white so much i don't hate white decks i don't even hate mono white decks i hate mono white weenie decks i hate the same aggro cards that we've seen for months over and over that's what i hate i i like there's a lot of white cards i love i love the wandering emperor i'm very excited to play four wandering emperors in this deck as it's one of my favorite cards to get back with invoke justice when the opponent bends over backwards to kill her, she comes back and we buff the team. Very strong. I love Restoration of a Ganjo. This is a fun value-based little enchantment that can also create like some sweet engines to get back some cards again and again. Like Hopeful Initiate, like Ambitious Farmhand, like Spirited Companion, like Professor of Sim blah blah blah. But it can also just straight ramp you. It can get back Field of Ruin if you're having trouble with creature lands. It's a, it's a sweet card. I'm excited to play it. I've got four copies of Skyclave Apparition. Why Skyclave Apparition? It hits Planeswalkers. It hits the Wandering Emperor and Sorin, which Brutal Cathar can't really do anymore. So I like the Apparition a lot more in this particular deck because of that, sp that specific interaction I think is becoming more and more a part of meta. This is a mid-range deck. It's not a truly aggressive deck, so we do need to exile Planeswalkers a lot. And and I like the apparition to do the job. Then one of the cards that I think is just like the best white card printed in a long time. I mean, maybe that's stretching too much, but it feels like it feels like I still have to play this card. Trust me, I cut it at first. I thought it wasn't right for the deck, but it really is. You can keep getting it back with Restoration of a Ganjo. You can put counters on things so that your hopeful initiate can do better at removing artifacts and enchantments with the extra ability. And you can bring it back again and again with Restoration of a Ganjo and Invoke Justice. So you just always have a battlefield that's scaling. And then on top of that, like we want the Professor of Sim blah, blah, blah. I actually love Spirited Companion more in most cases, but in this case, we have Hopeful Initiate, which we could play on turn one, and we have some blah 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 that's a 2-1, and we don't have Thalia, so we really want a 2-1 to attack and grow our Initiate on turn three if the opponent's playing a more defensive deck. And on top of that, we have March of Otherworldly Light, which also combos, it can combo a little bit with some blah blah blah. Actually, I need to do that. You have to have a white card in the sideboard for it to work, though. I meant to do this last night and I totally forgot. Yeah, there we go. So you can sim blah 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 for like reduced to memory, and then you can march of otherworldly light. And by the way, uh, sim blah blah blah. If you're new around here, we've had you know a few thousand subscribers since the meme began, but it's because for some re reason I can't say symbology, and I just went off on tilt on a viewer once because I said it doesn't really matter what it says, but it, it's fine. This is fine. You you guys love it. 
You love the simple blah, blah, blah meme. You love everything about me. Let's just be honest here. That's just a fact. There's not a single thing that I do that tilts, annoys, or triggers anybody. Just read the comments. Nothing but praise and affection. I appreciate that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> if you don't get my type of humor, it's going to be a long... It's going to be a long and interesting time we're going to have to get, or a short one. I don't know. A lot of people from the comments they leave, I think it just goes whoosh, whoosh, right over the head. They just, they just completely miss it. But hey, half of what I say you shouldn't believe, but the part about magic where I'm like making sweet plays and winning games, you should totally like believe that. And when I'm like making mistakes, but saying they're not mistakes, I know they're mistakes. I'm just saying they're not mistakes because that's how I am. Just don't believe anything I say unless uh, I'm showing you how to make a cool play and it works. All right, <laughs> let's dive in. Let the nonsense begin. On the play, if we don't draw land, this hand is really bad. Let's keep it. We'll get there. I believe in us. Or we'll draw a simple blah, blah, blah. Or we'll draw an ambitious farm hand. Like there's, there's so many live draws, right? And then triple restoration of a ganjo is gonna be so good, unless it's not. Actually drawing, I, I love keeping these kind of meme like new card, three or four of hands, just to remind everybody that the shuffler is fine. Like when you draw another one of the card you already have instead of the land. Like, like these are just right in my wheelhouse. Tangled. D-ramp, please. I'm, I'm willing to kill my own stuff to do it. I'm a maniac like that. But what is going on with Tangle Florahedron? Two of them in, in green and white. Well, it's a land, so I can't complain. Not the one I wanted, though. Archon. Well, we could deal with that, but let's get this restoration ticking and ramping. One spell turns okay with me for a little while. I'm a mid-range deck. So some kind of a green-white taxes deck to try to combat runes. This card has seen a lot of uptick because of runes. Question here is how powerful are their cards that go with Archon? Do they have Chariot, for example? Chariot would be a beating. Uh, it's fine. Don't You don't need to look in there. There's nothing to see here. Just get, just get out of there. It's fine. Wow. Okay. I mean, that's fine. I will has mana. Ranger class. How much damage am I taking? Too much. Let's go ahead and app the Archon. And we could also app the class, but I'm okay with them building a 3-3 and then getting rid of this. So let's get this restoration going. We still have nothing to get back. Our draw has been really kind of weird. There's been no one drops, no two drops. Been a lot of land and three Restoration of a Ganjo and three Skyclave Apparition. Okay, how does Yasharn affect us? Not much, I don't think. I'm trying to think of anything I do that sacrifices. I don't think that's my deck. If I block here, they get a 3-3. Three, three. So, no thank you. Okay, another land. Cool. Shuffler's fine. I don't know. It's just exile your stuff, I guess? I mean, eventually they level this. If we double lock, they get a token. Whatever. I think I should wait till they put mana into it, though. They might still have a chariot, so we should slow roll our... Our last Skyclave Apparition, I think. Have I really only drawn Skyclave Apparitions and lands since this game started? If, if, if the next draw is the fourth Apparition, I might cry. All right, they did put, oh my goodness. Okay, cool. They've got four mana open. They could be Wandering Emperor. Wandering Emperor would be obnoxious, but we can kill it with Skyclave Apparition. Yeah, I guess. We still have the mana to Apparition after combat. This might get exiled, though. Obviously, the opponent has something here. 
There it is. Let's see what they take out. They might make a 2-2 two -two and block one of the apparitions, or they might use a minus 2 and exile the cave. Okay. So, they need to attack with this for it to be effective. I'm just going to take out the Planeswalker. We could probably get to it next turn, but I think I will... Let's see what they've got. They've got four cards. We've got nothing. We've... <laughs> I mean, this is one of the more insanely bad draws I, I can remember. As far as just no versatility, no variety. Ooh! What's it do? I mean, I, I've got a permanent down there. I guess we'll take it. So what can this be? A 7-8. Can still be double blocked, and they have an indestructible. We could just make this... One counter and then two counters, so in trade. I mean, I will have so many planes. I guess if it's a five, they have to block it with multiple things. Uh, actually, we don't want them... Mm. We want to keep the, the ones that make four fours out of it. So let's keep this in it. All right. Haha, -ha, planes. Cool. Eventually I'll stop drawing them, right? So they have this 3-3 three, three that's indestructible. They can't kill either one of these. They have to get the angels involved, which we want. They've got to die or else they're just going to race us to death. Okay. Man, should I have taken out this ranger class? I guess we're gonna find out. I just They don't strike me as a heavy creature deck at all. I mean, they do have a good number. Maybe that was silly. It's good. Mm, they take out the 5-5, five, five, they get a 3-3. Three, three. I'm glad we put the counters on the 3-3-1. Three, three, I don't know if it's gonna matter. It looks like we're just gonna get outclassed badly in this game. We have to draw well. Every draw step matters now. Eight life. Professor of some blah blah blah. Discard it, play it for free, cast exhibition, I guess? You can also just cast it, right? Land, cast it. Then this is untapped. Very light card to the party. But, I mean, we're just down some air superiority. We're uh, something that can remove this away from happy. It also depends what their three cards are, though. And probably storm the festival deck? Actually unclear. There's a good amount of permanence. Okay, that's really good. That's really good. We get one turn. And our draws have been brutal. If we draw the fourth apparition, that would be super shuffler is fine. Okay. I'm not quite dead. I'm getting better. We should probably send some creatures at them. They have four mana open. They could have a wanderer, but... At this point, we can't play around any good cards anymore. This is just straight up, like, what do you got? What can you do? Finally, I'm home. Remember your train. I would like to draw a wanderer. That would be really good for me. Still here. Guards, to me. Lethal aerial threat. Woo. Okay. It's 
So we have to watch out for the Brew of Cathar. Oh, we can't cast two spells anyway. So the opponent can give this first strike. Oh my god. Yeah, they can. All right. So the Archon's probably just going to get bigger and stronger. We can't cast the other angel because of the Archon. They can't flip the Brute, though. Yep, that's the choice. Got the edge in this fight. <laughs> we have blockers for a few turns. But we can't cast multiple spells. It's a slow creeping death, isn't it? Do I have a dead Skyclave? I don't. They're all exiled. If one of these were in the graveyard, then reanimating it could be good. Can't play it and kill the Archon, so it's just you. Why not? No good attacks because of the 4-4. Where's my Wandering Emperors, man? My opponent got two. If I had just one, I think I'd be so much better off. Also, it would have been really nice to draw this later in the game instead of early. Keep watch for intruders. Okay. Fourth apparition. Shuffler's fine. So, if we play another spell here, the brute's gonna flip. If the brute flips, we got big problems. I don't have a good stop for that. Right now, my opponent doesn't have a flyer. They're probably gonna cast two things on their turn anyway, though. So I think we just have to let that happen. So I may as well play out my spells. I mean, does reduce to memory get rid of it? Probably. Man, this is a weird game. Legion Angel. Legion Angel. Professor Sim blah blah blah. Search for reduce. Because we might be reducing this brutal Cathar. Because it's about to take out my angel. Do you think the opponent has two more wanderers in their hand? It's possible. And we are on death's door for sure. What can they come up with? Land, good. Samurai, good. Man, the top of their deck has not served them up creatures in a long time. Their draw has been as awkward as ours. Can't target it because they played no spells. How intentional do you think that was? Pretty intentional, right? So if we play two spells now, it flips it again. But then if they play nothing... I mean, I guess I have to force them to flip it, right? I really want my angels back. I gotta kill that thing. So if they have to keep flipping it, it does buy me time, because they're not casting spells. Do I hold? I think all the restorations are gone. They're not going to make me discard. I have a lifelink creature now. Sneaky lifelink. Alright, probably takes the other angel again. Will they pass the turn again and flip it so that they're protected? They know about the reduce. Another land. A, another samurai. They're trying to go wide, but we're wide too. What is this game? What is this game? How about an emperor? Can I has emperor? They did not play a spell. They flip. Let's, let's transform. Cave. First strike. First strike. Oh my god. So if I attack with this, I don't gain the life because they block with their first strike. So brutal. Here's my cave. We hold. Now they can double spell to flip this again. Their brutal Cathar is working me, making these Skyclave apparitions look like clowns. I mean, they're adding it up. It has the blocks and I have a lifelink. They take their turn. They see a new top card. This ranger class hasn't cast anything forever. They've been drawing a ton of lands. 
They might not be. They might be just passing on purpose because of their brute, but that just means their draws aren't that good. If they were that good, they would play them. It's like the only thing keeping us in this. Can I just draw one Wandering Emperor? Please. Please. We're halfway through the deck. Oh my god. Well, there you go. And they off their Emperor because they see the cave, I'm guessing. And they only cast one spell, so it doesn't flip. You've got to be kidding me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But there's a lot of two twos, and we have a season Cathar. I'm kind of dead to a removal spell anyway. I'm I'm questioning: Do we just power up the cave and get busy, and try to close, or do we hold? I think we hold. Our best cards, I think, are still in front of us. We've been really unlucky. Remember, they got two cards from their Yasharn, so they've drawn eight lands. We got three lands from our, uh, four lands from our other things. I mean, whether or not to be aggressive, right? I, I mean, I can I win a long game? Not really, right? Actually, I'm I'm like a draw away from being in this. This is such a tough call. But let's do it. If they remove the Season Cathar, I die. I'm not going to beat another removal spell whether I have the cave or not, though. So let's try Cave Race. Can almost act. We can activate, too. Is this a Wandering Emperor? The third one? Did they take all the Wandering Emperors out of my deck? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Seems totally plausible. If they had a Wandering Emperor, they would have played it last turn, right? Because they could have used the First Strike ability to kill the Season Cathar and win the game. Right? Maybe they were a card short of that. Maybe they were one creature short of that play. Well, they should flash it in regardless. If they have it, they have it. Okay. Yeah, they, they, they know they've got it. I think they have a Wandering Emperor here, so I'm not going to gain life. And that's the way it is. All right. I don't think this matters, because I think in the end I'm going to die. But we may as well do it right. Go to one. They drew three Wandering Emperors. We saw half our deck and drew none. Easily one of the worst, one of the worst draws I've ever seen. And we die. Ah, oh, that hurts, but uh, interesting. Just kind of an endless stalemate. I think we played to the best of our ability. Maybe my early on Skyclave Apparition targets would have changed something, but man, it uh, feels really bad to get like, my favorite card dropped on me three times and not draw it a single time myself. We'll keep. Being on the play is fun. Hmm. Let's draw. If we get Restoration of Ganjo in our, like, top two, that's the card we want to play next for the most part. Are we doing black-white grindies? Intrepid Adversary. Adversary, CGB. Shut up. I make up my words. It's fine. Let's play some more One Toughness nonsense. Uh, I send in a dog. You want to trade? No trades. I don't think we Skyclave app this. We save Skyclave app for something else. How many Myriad's calls do I have? Zero? How come? 
should probably have two Amiria's calls and two caves. There's no real reason to have four. I think I'll make that switch after the game. I think I cut them once because I drew like three Amiria's calls as like my first three lands of the game, so I trimmed them, but I don't need four caves. Cave is expensive to activate. I mean, I don't know what they're trying to get up to, but I'm blocking. We have ways to get our ambitious farmhand out of the graveyard. Okay, they have a way to get theirs out of the graveyard, but what they don't know is I can take that out. I think I saved this for a planeswalker. Professor. Now oh, let's just kill this. Usually I'm a little more forgiving and let those cards hang around. I guess we're in a value face-off. It's gonna be tough. I could attack with a 5-5 dog next turn, just, just letting you know. But since they didn't do anything, they probably have some kind of removal. They'll probably get rid of our restoration out of jealousy and spite. We'll expose them for being bitter. They'll be fine. What do you think? Are they going to play a Lulf? Am I supposed to get Mascot Exhibition? Or am I supposed to get Reduced to Memory? I'm feeling... I'm feeling the Lulf this. I bet they have it. Why else would you play Black in this deck? Now this, they're going to Vanishing Verse. But at least I'll get a land. Because they're bitter. They hate that I have one and they don't. Okay. I know nothing. They've got something. Something they didn't feel like playing. Okay. Groovy. Draw. All right. Let's drop this land. To go get this that gets a land. Sneaky little way to get all my cake. Have my cake, eat it too. All right. So three mana can kill this with the seat. You can also kill it with Skyclave. But, I mean, I can also just trade for it. I don't think I'm afraid of it. Maybe I should be. This is kind of a tough call. I do need more things in general to die. Uh, if I hold this back, they basically freeze it, right? So, we'll do, we'll do this Legion Angel. If I wasn't going to use this mana anyway, you could say I should blow up Hive. But I don't, I don't mind if they power up Hive. It's their whole turn, and I can block with Companion and Legion Angel and kill it. And then I have more angels where that came from. So is I, I'm starting to wonder if their whole game plan is getting back intrepid adversaries every chance they get. These trades look really bad to me. But they keep doing it. Okay. They're the, the classic intrepid adversary devastating mastery combo deck. Fun. Pupper, draw me a card. Not bad, but not great. I want to hang on to this for the hive. And if I don't need the land right away, I'm going to keep holding on. Like Avril Levine. I'm going to keep... Holding on. Cause we'll make it through, we'll make it through. Ooh. Nothing you can say. Nothing you can do. There's no other way when it comes to the truth. So keep holding on. 
been a while since straight up singing. I've been a salty, salty boy since I got back from California. I blame Michigan weather. My children drench their hands. Oh, it's just hard children. to come down from like epic times in California. It's hard to get off that high, you know? We'll attack this, they'll block to save it, then we'll reduce it to memory, but the reduce is face up, so maybe they'll just double block this Legion Angel. Let's find out. Put it to them. Still feel like they might have a vanishing verse here. Ta-da! Well, I love them using that in that manner, though. And I love this trade with the dog. This is fine. Everything's fine. Do what I demand. <laughs> At least there is blood on your hands. I still liked holding this, but if we hold it this turn, we're just falling too far behind against the tokens. We've got a reestablished board. They can attack us good. They really, really can. Okay, they've made angels. They have an indestructible. They didn't attack with their menace creature for reasons. Cool. Sometimes you need a break. So if we go one, two, three, and we play a land, we have five. Okay. I do want to keep the lands marching forward. I don't have any cards I would consider dead here, but I do need a lot of flying blockers. So they need to be bigger than these angels. There. Defense! Good old creature size matters type fights. If you're gonna hook them, you're gonna hook yours too. Okay. They're finding their taps. Leaving up Emperor mana. Oh, their last card's mauling. Okay. Let's see how aggressive they get here. We can power up Hive. Oh man. <laughs> this is, we're gonna feel it for sure. Although they still don't know their spider as menace. That's really starting to add up. They found it! Curses. Okay, that's that's your attack all button. You can do that a little cleaner, but whatever. Freaking Skyclave Apparition looking a lot worse than Brutal Cathar in the two games I played for the video. Hasn't been that way on stream, hasn't been that way most of the time, but it's always moments like this. So if I had blown up this hive, if I had blown up this hive, I'd be in a much better position. It was definitely a mistake not to, but we're at five life. We get a discard here. I guess I'll discard you. Feels pretty weird, but I guess we do it. And I would really want a life linker, so I'm going to get the farm hand. Our man's going to get a planes. We have mana now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Good. So we're not casting Restoration of Iganjo this turn. Cast you. Cast you. Nuke that. Cast Hopeful. Plus one, plus one counter on the other angel so it can successfully block this 3-2 and hold. We must hold. The walls must hold. Well, Clay, how good is your draw? Everybody attacks, okay? Well, that's not a Meat Hook Massacre, probably. We could take the two, but I think we're so low we just block it all. 
He'll probably just kill the aspirant and we'll see what they do. Farewell. You know, they've got intrepid adversary. They definitely run farewell in their deck. <laughs> nice. <laughs> One Crawling Barons against the world. Yeah, that's good. They can have a 3-4 pump lethal attack next turn. I mean, if you're that good at drawing off the top, what, what am I supposed to do? Alright, my turn. I haven't drawn a Wandering Emperor this whole, whole recording session. Well, we used our reduced to memory, but we can go get a blocker, right? Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. I mean, the lifelink means we're just buying time, right? Man, if they're gonna draw like that, what am I supposed to do, huh? Again, half our deck, no Wandering Emperors. It's kind of heartbreaking. And ceiling Curtains. Well, at least they bricked on one of the two draws. They could make us both sacrifice, but I don't see a lot of point there. So they transform. And I'm sure they attack. And Inkling taking one for the team here. This is where, if I could get back that Skyclave Apparition, every card mattered. Alright, big draw step coming up. Do we stay in this game, or do we once again exit? I wonder why. Oh, they're gonna activate this now. I guess. Cave is turning into Amiria's call. This has been rough, man. This has been a bit painful. The deck is a lot better than this. J Money. J Money, I'm trying to reverse a really bad streak of just awkward RNG. You want to help a guy out? I mean, I can't mulligan it because if I do, I'll never see this card again. I just need a reminder that it exists. We train. We're so hopeful. We're staying optimistic, you know? That's that's admirable. Ooh. Okay. We'll do that. Because we can train next turn. And we'll get you for the first time. Looks like we're against runes or enchants. The difference being, of course, the runes. But man, I gotta tell you, Hopeful Initiate is really good in this matchup but we do have to get a few more plus one, plus one counters. And we gotta do it fast because like this card just goes crazy. Need one more plus one, plus one counter. Okay. Again. So let's see, do they just have it? Do they go Runeforge champion, play five runes, haha. -ha. They have Roaring Earth. Whenever land enters the battlefield, put a counter. I mean, I've seen this. I've seen landfall in chance as well. I don't think it's even close to as good as the other versions. That is not an enchantment. Okay. We draw the emperor. But how much are we going to do here with the initiate? I guess we can attack with, oh yeah, we can wandering emperor this. Then they get their Naturalist for another turn. I really want to kill that Naturalist. They'd also just play the Wanderer in Minus. And then what? They play a Saga? Interesting. They might not have Sagas. Or maybe they won't be able to cast it. Let's do it like this. I've learned much 
Traffic. Let's get that off the board. I think it's in, I think it's imperative that we get that off the board. And then let's get another counter on this hopeful initiate and save this professor to chump this Satsuke. And make the opponent figure out how to get past the professor and kill the emperor, of which we have another, and we have invoke justice. All right, they got Weaver. That's another pain in the butt. But these initiates, they're going to start tearing things up. Show them how we greet our enemies. All right, we're training. We're gonna hold open our options, but I'm probably gonna remove some counters here and kill the Weaver of Harmony. The Emperor might die, but we have a backup. Air of Enlightenment. Scry two and you gain two life. This is fine, right? The backside is like a two three? Two two, first strike. This is fine. If they wanna like copy these abilities or use these enchantments. It's not a big enough effect, I don't think. They scried one to the top. They hit their landfall. They power up the living lore. They can copy that ability. They're not going to. Let's see how they attack. Okay. Let's go after it. We want to remove all from one, not one from one, because then we can't train, potentially. Hopeful initiate nonsense commence. Strike fast and strike hard. Get him! Let him have the two life. Let's just hold up our options for a minute. Another naturalist, sure. I think we got this one. I think we got him this time. Counter goes on the naturalist, uh-huh. So, we could exile this and still have a wandering emperor, which I think is better than blowing up their other things right now. Scoopsies. All right. Draw Wandering Emperors. Win game. Easy. Got to remember that one. I'm going to put snow-covered planes in here and search for glory. We're just going to search for Wandering Emperors. We're going to effectively run eight. That's the future. All right. Let's go for top 200 with this win, and we break even. Even Stevens. Two Wandering Emperors. Easy keep. It's a little slow, though. Slow and terrifying. No march to break serve either, but I'm not getting rid of it. I'm not getting rid of it. I guess if we draw even one land, this could be our turn three play if we're getting beaten down. I've. Right now I'm feeling some blah blah blah, go get reduce. Black. Planeswalkers, gotta be ready. Green, snow. So probably blood on the snow. Black green usually involves Ren in seven. Shigeki might be an option. They could be going for the endless Shigeki nonsense, which would make me really wish I still uh, had a lion sash in my deck. Predation. Well, our hand is kind of predation proof because we have two emperors but we'll see if they have another all right how much are we walking into meat hook massacre I'm walking in to meat hook massacre a lot if we play this initiate but i don't think not playing the initiate is really an option the card just isn't really doing anything most of the time and if they don't have it we can start growing it quickly and get it out of range Oh, nice. Okay. So what do they have? 
We're holding priority, but that's Hive. Probably just removal, right? Agra Mauling, Infernal Grasp, Baleful Mastery. Let's go train. Patience. And we chill. Because we have a Flash Planeswalker. They know about it. But we can do it on end step. We don't have to do it now. Merchant. Why now? What did they hold up last turn? Could be a Soul Shatter, I guess. Let's get him. We're gonna put a counter on our professor and blah blah blah. I hope you're ready to lose. So it can attack into the merchant. I have got and grow the hopeful initiate. Okay, they didn't remove it. What does it all mean? What does it all mean? I think I wanna flip this farm hand. Pupper, draw me a card, make it good. Okay. Show them how we So we attack. Them. I'm waiting for them to do something. I feel like I feel like something very sneaky is going on. Is it time? Is it deadly dispute? Has it always been Deadly Dispute? That's not very scary. Okay, we can flip the farm hand. If they had a Meat Hook Massacre, they probably would have played it before. We can save the farm hand with the flip. Or we could hold up Hopeful Initiate, and what that can do is blow up a Meat Hook Massacre so they don't gain the life. Eh. I don't know. We could also, yeah, Seed of the Empire kill this. But I think we just want to keep our creatures on board. It's very interesting block there. It, it makes me think Blood on the Snow, to be honest. Which means that holding up the mana effectively wouldn't do anything. Although, no, if Blood on the Snow, they block this. I don't know what they're doing. I have no idea. Okay. More blockers. I mean, you're at six. I, now is it's board wipe time. It has to be board wipe time. Two eye twitch. Better than one. Another dog. Six health. And two block block take four, possibly five. It's not lethal. It's not lethal. And dog isn't going to draw something that makes it lethal, but we can do this. see if they draw a card off this or let it go and save their hive hive activation okay they're gonna draw well that just means when the skyclave app dies they don't get a card let me go get confront and they draw okay let's have this land available for the hopeful put a counter on our worst creature the dog they have to chump block a bit this turn anyway. Their merchant might make it through a turn, but it's whatever. Remember your training. Yeah, tra speaking of training, we're gonna do some. And then maybe I get into a position where I blow up their treasure and they come up a mana short with my three mana. 
Something like a hook. Alright, Twitch finds a block. Skullport Merchant's still trying to stick around. They're taking six. Um, opponent? Now or never. Now or never. That ain't it. Opponent? Your, your merchant isn't worth it, man. It's not worth your life. All right, they still got two treasures. And are you just dead? Never didn't have it. <laughs> Top 200. <laughs> just gate kept right at the border. <laughs> and we are back for the post game wrap. And don't worry about the stats. This deck is a lot better than the stats made it uh, would make it look uh, by a mile. It's a very fun deck. And the Invoke Justice, just as kind of a fair magic card, can be very, very powerful. The curves can be really intense. If there is one thing that this deck highlights, it's the power of the Wandering Emperor continuing to be the ultimate four drop if you can get a few creatures on the board. It also, like, the deck does significantly better if you have an early Luminarch Aspirant, like any white deck should, or if you have a removal spell at the right time. So I am not worried at all about the performance today. I played it enough to know it's actually really good. And if you want to see the deck in action more, you should check out the stream VODs, which I make live on YouTube for members. So if you hit the join button, it's only $4.99 a month. I take all my Twitch VODs, I put them on YouTube, ad free so you can watch them with 2x speed and uh you can jump around in them and you don't have to learn how to use twitch because some folks are you know not into that they, they would rather stay red not go purple i understand so uh yeah hit join if you want to see this deck in action a lot more uh the youtube the post uh, of the YouTube stream is a day before this video. So if you join today, it's probably still the most recent one since I don't think I'll have time to stream today. So this deck is good. I do recommend it if you want a change of pace from typical lazy lame white and want to play white that's very interesting with back and forth. It fights for survival. It really tries to play the board. It doesn't use sweepers. You have to put your removal spells in all the right places. Every draw is important. Like. This this is fun magic to me. So you can say what you want about it being a white deck. It's still very much, uh, in my opinion, a very good, fun, and uh, entertaining CGB deck. So it was fun invoking justice. I don't care what none of y'all say. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I'll see you in the next video. You're cool.